So I wanted to show some rehydration of the peas and corn. So I'm going to use some of our old peas and corns to show that. So we have peas from, I think it's from our batch four back in August of 2017. And then our oldest corn is only from October of 2019. So we've already used up all of our old corn. Anyway, we're going to get that and that is in the second bin back. So 15B, this is 15 front. So then 15 back is 15B. So we'll get those out and get those and find those. So I have my hard copy of our inventory. And so I want to take the corn from October 2019, one of the bags of that, and it's in bin 15B. Plus, I have some peas from uh, September of 2017 in the same bin. We print a new hard copy every so often and just make our changes on it and then update the database. This is one of our earliest bags from August of 2017. We got the machine at the beginning of August in 2017. So this is literally one of our oldest bags of food. So this would have been, uh, I'll have to check from, this is before I was even putting a batch number or anything on it. So this is a really old one. So we'll take one of those and we'll update it. Then the other thing I'm looking for is corn from October, so 10, 19. And it's right here. And we have multiple bags of that. Yeah, so we have a few bags of that. Okay, and this is a more reasonable size, a two cup size. You can see quite a difference on those two. At first we were bagging everything in really big bags, and then we decided we'd rather have smaller bags. So we have a two cup bag of corn from October of 2019 and what looks like probably a quart of peas from August 19th, 2017. So almost five and a half years ago. And I don't think I want to rehydrate this entire bag. So I'll probably pour half of it out and then reseal it and save it for later. But I'll still mark it off our list and we'll use it soon. So I'm finally getting ready to rehydrate a sample of the corn and the peas. I meant to do this about three days ago. That's why the video is so late. I'd normally probably put it in just this small pan and add water, cover it, and let it simmer slowly on the stove. But on these, I'm going to use the measuring cups so we can see it better. And because a lot of times I would rather just add boiling water over the top of it. So that's what we're going to do with these. So first, we'll get these open. So this is some corn uh, that I got at Costco. It was frozen corn and it was from October of 2019. So a little over three years ago. All right, got it. Okay, and I got the oxygen absorber out. And dry corn is absolutely delicious. If you've never tried freeze-dried corn while it's still dry, give that a try. It's really, really good. On the peas, I don't want to do this entire bag, so I'm going to measure out a couple of cups full and then reseal the bag. But, huh, I'm going to take a couple cups out of this to use, and I'll just store the rest of it in this bag because it has a zipper. And so then I don't have to worry about resealing it. And that'll be fine for a few days. So this is one of my original bags I got with the freeze dryer. So five and a half years ago, approximately. And I probably got these peas at Costco also. Oh, I don't really need that. I can just fill it up to the two cup line. So a couple of cups of peas. I'll just pour the rest of them in here to save. So that's a still a full, very full two cups in there. 
So I'll go ahead and just close this back down with the zipper. And then I can reheat seal this if I want to stay, save it for any longer amount of time. And if I were saving it for a longer amount of time, I would put a new oxygen absorber in there also. A longer amount of time, meaning weeks or months. But this is only going to be sitting on our counter uh, for hours or days. So we'll be using this right away. And I better make a note. I'm going to just pour bunch of hot water in here. They're going to try to float up. I'll kind of keep them sunk down. My plan is to tuck them into a Ziploc and then I can suck some of the air out to push them down. It's probably obvious, but rehydrating it right in the bag would work really well, especially if you're out camping or something. Just pour the water in here, get it high, push the, the peas down and zipper it shut. And then you could, as one viewer mentioned, wrap it in a towel to keep it nice and toasty. Okay, so now I've got the boiling water, literally, and I'll see if I can get that in there. I'll probably need a little bit more, but it's floating up. kind of hard to stir. This was probably the wrong shape. A shallower, wider thing would probably have been better. Oh, and the fact that they shrank a bit when it was freeze-dried. Two cups of the dry is going to swell up to maybe two and a half or three cups. The corn seems to be absorbing the water faster than the peas. For now, I'm going to try this out. By sucking some of the air out, that's pushing the corn down into the water, and that should help it rehydrate. Might as well cover these too. So we'll come back in 15 minutes, give them a little stir, and then see if they need additional time. So it's been just over 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and stir these a bit and check them out. It's still pretty toasty, so it's held the temperature okay. I mean, it's got a lot of glass there and that loses a lot of heat through there. Well, that's really full, so huh. I need more water than that. They're looking real good, but I, I'm going to need a little bit more water, so I'll have to heat up a little bit more. Oh, that's real good though. I didn't taste any dry spots in that. It's like they're underdone right now. So that's pretty close. I'm going to heat up a little bit more water because the water level is about an inch. Yeah, about an inch of the peas are not touching the water. It's looking pretty good though. we will do the same with the corn. This looks like it's covered better so the corn didn't apparently shrink as much when it got freeze-dried and it didn't swell up as much when it was rehydrated so it's still covered better oh the corn is really good that's already nice and tender wow that's nice okay so i don't need to do anything more with that one i think except for add salt pepper and butter anyway that's good i'm gonna go ahead and set it in here while i add some more boiling water to the peas. That's looking good. Adding a little bit more boiling water. I bring it up a little bit higher. That looks pretty good. All right, so I sucked out the extra air to push the peas down and now they're all covered with water. Looks real good. This looks fine already. So we'll give this maybe another five minutes and then we'll come back and add some pepper and a little bit of butter or something that's similar to butter. So it's been a few minutes later. It's probably been about 10 minutes later because I got sidetracked doing some other stuff, of course. So. so the peas definitely must have shrunk more when they were uh, freeze drying 
or at least the corn did not expand as much when it got rehydrated. But anyway, they both came out real nice. Oh, it's gonna add a bit of butter. We got a deal on butter. It was a 25 kilo cube of butter. So I kind of hacked it up into smaller pieces and now we're dealing with giant blocks of butter. Yeehaw! So the corn rehydrated perfectly. I detect no difference than if I had taken the frozen bag of corn, popped it in um, a pan and heated it. So it's just as perfect as it was when it went in there. I'm pretty sure if you gave somebody two samples, one fresh out of the bag and one this, uh, heated the same way, I'm pretty sure you couldn't tell the difference. Wow, that's good. So it's been sitting in the bag at room temperature for a little over three years. Excellent. The peas, I would say, are the same. It's five and almost five and a half years, but um, I can't really tell any difference. So the peas took longer to rehydrate, but I think it's really worth it. Now, I don't have weights of water, how much water to add on these, but you really don't need that if you're just going to rehydrate them out as a vegetable. If you're adding them to a soup or a stew and you're, that's going to reduce the amount of liquid in that container, then you might want to add some moisture to it. On all the more current things, I put the weight on it so that I know how much water to put in it. So if I knew if this bag was one pound of corn, I could just put it on a scale and find out how much it weighs now, subtract that from a pound, and then add that much water. They came out really well. Mm, 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 mm. Holy moly. That stuff's really quite good. Okay, we'll see you on a future one. Thanks for watching. Bottom line on corn and peas, or peas and corn. It's delicious, it rehydrates well, and no, I can't tell the difference between fresh, the frozen bags of it heated, or the rehydrated, freeze-dried ones. That seems to be a common question, and I think that I cover it pretty well by saying this stuff's delicious. If it wasn't as good as before, I would say this isn't as good as before. I can't tell the difference. That doesn't mean other people couldn't tell the difference. And if I had them side by side, perhaps I could tell the difference. I have done that with a few things like slices of spiro sliced ham, and I can't tell the difference, nor could other people. I did a blind taste testing with four different people with sliced ham that had been rehydrated and sliced ham from a new sliced ham. Uh, they couldn't tell which one is which. I think I would get this approximately the same results with these corn and peas. It's really good. It rehydrates great. The peas do take longer. Probably a total of a half hour for the peas and probably only 15 minutes for the corn, which kind of surprised me. I thought the, they would be more similar. Anyway, they're really good. I don't know what else I could possibly say about those. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.